that. Oh. Well, I've been driving in Japan for a month now, and I think it's finally time to show you everything. Absolutely everything. Well, absolutely nearly almost everything. So, fasten your metaphorical seatbelts, and let's go and experience Japan in glorious high definition video. Oh, fuck it. Why do seatbelts do this? Fuck it. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that this car is right-hand driven because in Japan they drive on the left-hand side of the road, like in Britain. I thought this was a bit strange at first until I, of course, remembered that Japan was ruled by the samurai in the Edo era between 1603 and 1867 and the preference was to move on the left-hand side of the road because samurai drew their swords with their right hand typically so they could draw their swords and fight easier. Although it wasn't made official until 1872 when British engineers helped the Japanese build their first railway, which was, of course, left-hand operated. So, that's why Japanese people drive on the left-hand side of the road. Right then, let's actually get going. Um, oh, it's, it's Japanese radio. Uh, Japanese, of course, love Wham. So it's, uh... Okay, so there are two reasons it might be obvious that I'm renting this car. The first is the pink Save the Earth sticker on the back of the car. The second reason is that the Nissan March is a girl's car. It might be efficient, fun to drive and smell like the meadows of Narnia, but it doesn't hide the fact that this is still referred to as a handbag car uh, for women. And the reason I chose this car was because all the other cars at the rental place looked like they were going to fall apart after about a 25 minute drive. I had originally intended to get a very specific type of car when I came to Japan, um, called a K-car. Japan is quite unique for having a, a very defined category of cars called K-cars. And basically it's a motor vehicle with a 660cc engine or below, God forbid. Because of its small engine size, K-cars are very economical. Um, you can actually get to the outer rings of Saturn and back on a single tank of fuel and still have enough left over to go to the 7-Eleven get fried chicken and you can tell K cars quite easily because they have yellow number plates whilst regular bigger cars have white number plates. As I said I would have got one because the cost of running it is lower and the taxes are lower uh, but I'm inheriting a friend's car next year um, so it worked out cheaper to just rent my first year. Another reason I got this bigger engine car is because where I am turns into Antarctica uh, next month and during the winter. Not only that but where I live is on a plane um, and it gets really windy and it was my hope that in having a bigger engine vehicle come this winter I won't be starring in a live action version of Shitty Chitty Bang Bang. Still, regardless of what car you get, there is one thing that takes some getting used to. Drinking alcohol and driving in Japan. Uh, in most countries, to my knowledge, you can have a glass of wine or a beer and then get behind the wheel of a vehicle so you can have a few units. In Japan, if you so much as smell alcohol and then get behind the wheel of a car, it's game over. Uh, there are no units allowed and if you get caught uh, driving with any alcohol in your system, you'll lose your job, you'll probably get deported and you'll almost certainly be thrown out the back of a plane over the Sea of Japan just to make sure you don't do it again. I've seen it happen, uh, it's not pretty, don't do it. Instead, drink um, drink the pungency. Drink that instead, because you don't want to get deported. Oh, shit. But if you do want to go out for a drink with friends or work colleagues, and you want to do that in the comfort of your own car, get there and back in your own car, there is one alternative to a taxi, um, and it's actually cheaper, and it's called Daikor. Daikor, literally translated, means acting as agent. Basically, you ring up the company, and they'll send out a car with two guys in it, and when they get there, one guy will get out of the car, um, you give him your keys, and he'll drive you and your friends home in your own car. The other guy will follow you 
in the dike or taxi. Um, and when you get back home, the guy who's just driven your car will hop back in his dike or taxi and disappear back off into the night. So it's great because obviously the next day when you're hungover or feeling like crap, you don't have to walk out and go and get your car. You've already got it at your place. Um, and as I said before, it actually works out cheaper, which I don't quite understand how, but it does. It's popular in rural areas where public transport becomes a thing of the past after midnight. And what it basically means is nobody's left out. Everyone um, can go out, drink, and have a great night, except Hitler. If you like the thrill of recklessly driving through the countryside on a sunny winter's morning, with a total disregard for the mortality of small creatures, Japan is not for you. Driving in Japan is quite a slow experience, with speed limits ranging from about 40 kilometers per hour, which is 24 miles per hour, um, to 100 kilometers per hour, which is 62 miles per hour, if you're lucky. So whilst it's good for animals and creatures that like to dance in the way of oncoming traffic, it's, it actually means that most journeys take longer than time itself. If you're honestly thinking about taking a, a reasonably long journey in Japan, uh, I would honestly consider taking a coffin, because you are going to need it by the time you reach the end of your destination, should you reach the end of your destination. Or perhaps if you're thinking of taking a really long journey, uh, you might consider taking one of those highways I mentioned earlier that go up to 100 km per hour. Please be in English, please be in English, please be in English. So if you're a millionaire, you can actually drive around Japan on the uh, highways, which are all toll operated. The only trouble is i found that you need one of two things. Either a car stuffed with cash, or a car stuffed with passengers with cash, um, to be able to afford the journey. I recently looked at driving down to Osaka, in a few hundred kilometres south of where I am. And the actual cost of getting down there, one way, was 21,000 yen, which is of course enough money to start your own religion. You could always avoid the highways and just go down smaller roads all that way. A friend of mine recently did drive down there and he avoided toll roads. So it is doable. You just have to decide what's more important, your time or your money. And uh, for him, it was his money. So if you're thinking about driving around Japan, take a lot of money or have a car full of people or catch a train. Driving in Japan this time of year is an absolutely breath-stealing experience. The scenery and the leaves and the mountains and everything, it's just beautiful, it really is. And it's incredibly dangerous because you spend most of your time looking at it all and not on the road. And to me, it's obvious why the Japanese lead the way in camera technology, why they have so many companies that make such great cameras because they took one look around them at the mountains, the leaves, the streams, the rivers and the everything and just thought how can we share this with other people, how can we share this with our friends and family on Facebook and Instagram and from that I'm pretty certain that Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Fujifilm, all these companies were born, probably. And I think that's as good a reason as any to get a car, to drive around, to be able to see and experience it all whilst listening to Ray Charles. What you say? Turn right, then your destination will be on the right. Your destination is on the right. 